Yo, what's happening everybody? King GBL here, and welcome back to some Jungle Cup. Today I'm going to be showcasing a very interesting team, featuring Lantern, Venusaur and Vigoroth. Super strong team in this cup, and if you're looking to make a climb, I do highly recommend it. I've basically found that Lantern is the best lead in this cup. It almost never gets a bad lead. Sometimes you do get a, a Whiskash. What I normally do, if I get a Whiskash lead, is go into Vigoroth, and basically shield any move they want to throw. Normally the opponent stays in to get a Scald, which will allow you to get 6 counters for him. And at that point, if the opponent brings in their own Vigoroth, you will be able to outpace it and take swap. Or at the very least, you can get shields down, and Venusaur with shields down, and this cup goes crazy. Of course, with Venusaur, you have to really watch out for Skarmory. You do get completely walled by that Pokemon, and that's kind of the problem with Grass types in the current Grit League meta. Skarmory is such a hard check to them. However, all our different flyers like Mantine, you do like 60% with a Frenzy Plant. It's pretty crazy damage. Um, same with Pelipper, it'll probably do like 80% of that thing. I am using Nun Shadow. The Nun Shadow is a little bit better into things like uh, Vigro, for example. You actually do win that match pretty comfortably, because you can tank a Body Slam, and you can basically Frenzy Plant them and farm them down, whereas they cannot really afford to uh, tank the Frenzy, otherwise, like I said, they will get farmed down. Also, we've been just seeing a ton of teams that are like Flyer in the lead, Flyer in the back, so Lantern just performs super well, and oftentimes those Flyers are paired with Mud Boys. I'm seeing a lot of double Mud Boy teams as well. I think you've seen in this matchup here, I met the uh, safe swap of my Venusaur. Now, if the opponent lands a Stone Edge and an Aqua Tail, they can actually flip this, so you might want to be a little bit careful. You might consider throwing your energy a little bit sooner here. Because as you're about to see, the opponent does flip swap. So that's kind of unfortunate, but the opponent had to go down two shields to flip swap. If I had a shield at once, I definitely could have taken it. The opponent has already shown um, Stone Edge. I'm going to respect this move. I know it's not super effective, but it will do a lot of damage, and I need to keep the uh, Lantern alive. So in comes Whiskash. We're going to bring in the... Uh, we're going to bring in the Vigoroth, and I'm expecting them to chip and dip, go into Skarmory here. The thing about Vigoroth is, we can just put in a lot of work against Skarmory. I also still have a shield, so the um, Whiskash can't really just immediately take out the Lantern. The opponent will end up getting off a Brave Bird on me, which is of course unfortunate, but I do come out with 100 energy, and basically free surfs from a Lantern will more or less win that matchup against uh, Whiskash. We're going to spark it the whole way down. I cannot shield this move, because if I do, the opponent will just double my bomb me. I can't really let them do that. Generally speaking, guys, I do recommend taking swap of this team if you do have a, a lantern on a Skarmory. It is sometimes worth investing the shields just to take swap. What you also might find is you'll get sometimes mud boy safe swaps like um, Whiskash. If the opponent builds up to 9, you just respect the move, right? Even if you have to go down a shield with your Venusaur, oftentimes if they're safe swapping a mud boy, it's double mud boy. So what you can often do is shield up a blizzard, farm it the whole way down and then basically look to even swap out into your Vigoroth against the Flyer in the lead, and you'll most likely find something in the back that Venusaur can deal with. Anyway guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all having a fantastic day. Do me a quick favour, drop a like on the video. If you've not yet done so, subscribe to the channel, it's absolutely free, and of course I'll be producing as much content as possible here. Um, this video should be going up after my live stream. I do stream here on YouTube most days, so feel free to tune in. I'll put on notifications if you want to be notified for that. And with all that being said guys, today's question is, what do you think of Jungle Cup? And what do you think of two week metas in Go Battle League? This week and next week we have Ultra League and Master League, alongside two weeks of a Great League meta. Do you guys think that's good, or would you prefer new cups every week? Anyway, hopping back into the battles, this seemed done quite well for me. I got up from, I believe, under 2500, all the way up to over 2650. Currently I'm sitting at around 2700 with a different team, so I'm going to be streaming, of course, my uh, expert run today, hopefully. Uh, in this match here, he put has a Steelix. Lantern can do decently into Steelix. I do at the very least like to get both shields. Um, I sort of can't really let them like fully take me out here. I would rather go into Venusaur at this point. I can't let them permanently debuff me. I can definitely tank one of these moves and we're going to look to basically uh, just stick to good timing here. From a Shadow Steelix, these do add up quite a lot, these Dragon Tails. But Venusaur, it's not of course bulky. We are using the Nun Shadow, which is a little bit better. The opponent comes into a Vigoroth, which definitely gives me a huge opportunity. They go for Body Slam. I farm them the whole way down. And as you're about to see, this Frenzy Plant is going to absolutely clap the cheeks of the Steelix. Good games well played there. And you're going to see, like, I definitely got a lot of amazing leads with this team. Like, honestly, I was completely RPSing people for quite some time there. Lantern lead was just doing super well. I think people are pretty aware that people are using Lantern lead now. So as I mentioned, I was trying this out yesterday with uh, Venusaur in the lead, and it actually does work out quite well. There are some teams that are very tricky for you. For example, Abomasnow teams, like, there's a, uh, there's a team, right? which has got Lantern in the lead, with a bomb of snow in the back. If you imagine this team composition against that one, very very difficult to deal with. The only way you can sort of beat it is if you take straight alignment on it. I think it's Lantern, Vigoroth, a bomb of snow. So if you can somehow beat Lantern leads with your own Lantern, that's just about the only way to beat a team like that. But most of the teams I was facing, there's definitely a lot of play into. Um, this matchup with Claude Sire, if you swap in too late, they can flip this matchup. 
I think if the opponent gets either a free or four mudshot advantage, they can flip it. But two frenzies plus uh, vine whips basically takes it out. The opponent aggro swaps. And yeah, this is basically curtains for them. Uh, Whiskash, they're only going to ever throw the Scald here. I'm going to shield this nuke, uh, knowing that the opponent will still have to throw two more moves on the bigger oaf. So we're in a very good position here. We do play to CMP time. Oh, sorry, I believe I've actually threw one before CMP, so I don't get debuffed. And then we go for the CMP on this time around. So yeah, when you're playing against Whiskash, you want to get your moves off before they get the debuffs off. Because of course, that's what they're going to do, right? Even though in this situation, maybe they should go double mob. Mm, maybe not quite from here. Maybe they couldn't really go double mob bomb from here. Anyway, the opponent will take me out. Um, Lantern still has some energy. And they're getting pretty close to surf range. We're going to go for this move straight away. In fact, we do pause the turn. Uh, just making sure the opponent does not catch. Because if they do want to go for a catch, I want to make sure to farm the uh, the mountain the whole way down. That's a good games right there. And hopping into the next one here, we do have Lantern versus Talonflame. Once again, another fantastic lead. You're going to see that the opponent brings in a quite awkward uh, safe swap here. Now, this is a team you need to be aware of if you're going to play this team. Um, oftentimes, the opponent will safe swap Dragonite or Altarium. Um, it's basically Talonflame double flying dragon. So, triple flyer team. Very weak to ice in the back. <laughs> I would love to use like a Dugong against this team or something. But, but yeah, this is a team. It's not a very common one, but you do see it from time to time. Um, what you basically need to do is find somewhere for your Venusaur to go. The best place for Venusaur to go is Dragonite on this team. Just because Frenzy Plants do like half anyway against the Shadow Dragonite. And I would highly recommend just keeping health, as much health on Lantern and Vigoro as possible. Now the opponent most likely brings back in the Talonflame, knowing that of course they have Dragonite in the back. And we can just Body Slam Spam. We do get the bait off here. We go for a 4 and throw here, but the opponent goes for a catch. We go for a little bit of an overfarm. I'm going to go straight for the Rock Slide. In this match, this uh, Body Slam would not be enough. We're going to take the side. We've got the, uh, the Rock Slide loaded. The opponent was still one incinerate off the move. So good games there. This team composition seems like a bit of a death sentence for uh, Venusaur. If you ever do get a Dragonite safe swap, what I recommend doing is chipping with the Surf and then going into the uh, the Venusaur. The opponent will get off uh, one Dragon Claw. Without the Dragon Breath damage, you should be able to live it and get off a Frenzy Plant, which at that point, after the Spark and Surf damage and a few Vine Whips, that'll basically take it out. So if you get a Dragonite safe swap, chip it with the Surf, go Venusaur. If you're playing against the uh, Talon Flame lead. Now in this matchup here, I do like to go, uh, grab a shield off the opponent. We do come out and clear a debuff. And usually what the opponent likes to do here is go Psychic Fangs and bring in their own Vigoroth. But in this case, they bring in the Mantine. Now the opponent's showing one Pokemon in the back that's super weak to Lantern. I'm thinking that this could be potentially something like a Whiskash. Or it, it needs to be some sort of an answer to Whiskash as well. So it could be a Dragon. I decide here, I do sort of want to take alignment if possible. The opponent will get off a final Aerial Ace here. I think I decide just to hardcore take alignment, just in case it is like a double flyer team. Oftentimes, things that are good answers to Whiskash may not be great for Venusaur. We built up the back to back body slams, the opponent lets it for you, and it actually is just a Vigoroth. So, this is quite good here. Um, I can pretty much put my Venusaur wherever I want it. We get off a dying body slam, and in this situation here, we can basically take them out with one frenzy. So, we're going to come in here, farm up, and the opponent can fire off a body slam. We comfortably live this, and the opponent's already in frenzy plant range. They come into Steelix here, I'm perfectly happy with this. I still have some energy on the lantern. So what I end up doing here is doing a couple of extra Vine Whips, swapping into Lantern, and basically forcing the, the opponent to throw, I think, two moves here. We're not quite in Body Slam range, the opponent will have to throw a second move, and at this point, yeah, the opponent realises, yeah, we, we sort of have to throw here. If we get a Surf through, that's basically game over. And we come into the Venusaur, and we do just about outpace to the move. So it was getting kind of close there, had the opponent somehow got a farm down, that would have been very rough for me. But good games to the opponent, and in the next match, we do have the dreaded Lantern lead. Now in this situation, the opponent actually aggro swaps into Vigorov, I'm so happy with this. Predicting that it's a Bombasnow in the back, I decide to come straight into Venusaur. Um, even behind a couple of counters, you can still win this matchup. We're going to play to CMP time. Venusaur does win CMP on the, uh, the Vigoroth. And I basically want to take alignment if I can. Um, if I can possibly put my uh, Vigoroth on what I think is a Bombasnow in the back. And my uh, Lantern on their Lantern. That'll be perfectly good for me. I'm going to play here just before the CMP time. And I believe that because I've already tanked a move, I still have a shield left. I don't think the opponent quite gets to uh, two body slams here. So we're going to just shield it up. Fight for alignment here, and look to fire for the Frenzy Plant. This will guarantee switch advantage, and if the opponent just so happen to have a flyer in the back, which of course would be a good answer to Whiskash, we should be good. The opponent comes in and actually water guns us down. The opponent's a water gun, which of course is much more negative against Spark Lantern. Um, the opponent comes into uh, Whiskash, so yeah, definitely fantastic that he took swap here. This is definitely a great play. The opponent's team, definitely very, very weak to grass here, ABA weak to grass. And the opponent also had a Vigoroth, so the opponent was like basically triple weak to Venusaur on this team. Um, we're going to just stay in here, go for moves. The opponent can land a Stone Edge and an Aqua Deal to take you out. Um, you can tank the Stone Edge, but you don't necessarily have to. And at this point, guys, we're chilling, right? Um, Mud Bomb coming in, that doesn't even KO us. I just stop attacking, because I don't want them to get extra energy. Good games to the opponent. Whenever I do see a Lantern lead, like, I'm always quite afraid that it is going to be something uh, very negative for me in the back. 
In that case, a Venusaur just beat the whole team. Talon Flame Lead, Dragonite Swap. Okay, here we see it. Here we see it. So look, we're going to go for a Surf right here. The opponent always lets it go, and we come into our Venusaur. Now, because we haven't taken a ton of Dragon Buff damage, we can actually tank this move, and we outpace to the Frenzy Plant, the second one. So we go for this move immediately. If the opponent wants to take alignment, that's perfectly fine. It's Talon Flame and two Dragons, so I don't need alignment here. What I need is energy advantage and uh, potentially shields down, so I can look to rock slide the Talon Flame, rock slide the Altaria, and look to Thunderbolt the, the Talon Flame or Surf it, whatever the case may be. The opponent does go for the superpower, which of course will give me less energy, and they come back into the Talon Flame here, realizing that they of course have the um, Altaria in the back. Now I decided here, I outpace them so heavily that it's their win condition to call the bait. I come into Altaria, putting all the hope and faith into it, but Vigoroth does super well here. Um, I mistakenly probably just go for a bait here. I decided I can go straight Body Slam at this stage though, because I can just come into Lantern. I've still got like almost two Body Slams on the Vigoroth. I can just tank whatever they want to throw here. If they want to go Moonblast, that's perfectly fine. Um, they're basically in Rockside range. I go for Thunderbolt here. The opponent's basically forced to let it go, because if they don't, yeah, we just come back in the Vigoroth. Go for Rock Slide, and that's curtains for them. So yeah, good game to the opponent. Um, if you decide to try this team, make sure you do that that way, because they can easily run for you with that team. I have lost matches to that team before. If they come in with the um, Altaria safe swap, you can come into Vigoroth on that matchup. You could go into Venusaur and go for Sludge Bombs and just try to get some usage out of it. I think that's also definitely something you can take into consideration. The opponents often go for a Dragonite safe swap because if they get met by a Steelix, which you can see on screen here, they can at least get off a superpower. But yeah, basically against that team, all you need to know is your Vigoroth and your Lantern are your win cons. If you see a Talon Flame lead Dragon swap, you just shield and keep those Pokemon healthy. Now in the match, in the next match here, um, I like to chip it twice with Lantern and they come into their Vigoroth here. Now for whatever reason, whenever I see a Steelix lead, they're always like double or triple weak to Venusaur in some way. A Steelix not necessarily weak to Venusaur, right? But they are usually typically not very strong against it in the back. Like they don't typically have like a Steelix plus a Flyer. Not always. Um, I'm gonna fight for Swap here anyway, see what the opponent wants to do. Um, at this point guys, I think I can come in for a Vine Whip Down. We get a nasty Vine Whip Down here. I decided to let this move go for it. Does about 35-40%. Yeah, about 40%, I want to say. We farm it the whole way down. And the opponent, if they don't have a hard answer to this, they could be in trouble here. Because even if they have a flyer, if it's not Skarmory, we can do heavy, heavy damage. I think I said like 60 or 70% earlier. Um, maybe about 50% with the Frenzy Plant. Um, in comes this. And basically all I need to do is get rid of this thing, spark it down a little bit more. And yeah, we're basically chilling. We can spark down the Mantine a little bit more and put them in Divine Whip down range. So yeah, good games there. Um, or maybe the opponent makes it to two here. This is going to be very, very close. They might just make it to two. Oh, the opponent does make it to two. So how could I have won that match? Um, I think had I got the energy with Venusaur, I could have won that match. So maybe taking out the Steelix was a mistake. Uh, in this next match, guys, this is a fantastic lead. This doesn't look like a great lead, but this is a fantastic lead. Now, I was playing this out for the first time, so I played this wrong. What you should do is go straight for the Surf. Because the opponent will go for a lunge debuff. Uh, go straight for the Surf. The opponent shields up the first moves anyway. Um, we get the Surf Ray Bang, and we're going to look to get off the next one immediately. Oftentimes, what the opponent will do is shield once for him the whole way down. Now, what you can then do is, as you can see, get them down into like one or two counter range. Um, the opponent will always get off a final lunge here. I just tank it on the Vigoroth. And sometimes, whenever they debuff you, they get off a second move. Yeah, they get off the Power Up Punch. So, at this point, what you should probably do is swap in the Venusaur and get a Vine Whip through. Because what you're about to see here is the opponent is super, super weak to Venusaur. This team composition in particular is Lantern in the back. If you see Buzzwell lead, you can almost bet your house on it's Lantern in the back. Why? Because Buzzwell is so weak to flying that they need a hard check to flying in that team. So you just play at the lead with Lantern, let them take you out. The opponent comes in and goes for a catch on Lantern, as if that's going to help them. You fully charge this move and farm them the whole way down. Don't go for an undercharge, that'll allow them to get off a Thunderbolt. Just fully charge the Frenzy, farm them the whole way down, and it's basically game over. Whenever I was playing my battles and I seen that team, I was so happy every time I seen it, because I just knew the backline and I knew how to beat it. So that's another good thing to keep in mind, guys. Um, so in this next match, the opponent comes into Vigoroth. In the Vigoroth Cups, what you need to do is always chip and dip, right? The opponent goes straight for a Body Slam. If you're the opponent in this situation, that's the wrong play. You over farm in that situation because it allows me to comfortably bring in my Vigoroth. I chip them, I dip them, the opponent dumped a lot of their energy, and actually I can just farm them the whole way down at this point. However, if the opponent keeps the energy, they can get off multiple body slams, look to force shields, look to shield back, and they can make it very, very awkward. Now typically, after this matchup, I tend to get off one or two rock slides, or a rock slide and a body slam. I wasn't able to get it off, so I just basically wait down my switch timer. I stayed in to chip them, so I do need to wait this down. As you can see, my switch clock is coming back up. The opponent goes for a Brave Bird and Dip. 
I decided to just respect this move. Um, it does about 35-40%, does a lot, in comes Claude Sire. Now you're going to see this matchup play out. Um, if the opponents are smart in this situation, what they go for is double Stone Edge. One Earthquake's not enough, they have to throw two moves no matter what. So we normally just let the first move go. Um, yeah, they have to go for two Stone Edges. And I think we're definitely going to shield once in this matchup. If I can try to land a Frenzy Plant, I should be in an okay position. Lantern does still have some energy. If I can just get them into a uh, Surf Range, we should be basically fine. Or maybe what the opponent wants to do is um, try to get a farm down with Skarmory. Skarmory Farmery. The opponent does go for that. In comes Skarmory. I don't quite fall for the Insta Throw. I build up to two moves. And yeah, that, that could have been potentially a lose con. I was expecting the opponent to come in and start sniping the Venusaur. We do get a CMP tie here. Good game to the opponent. The opponent was trying to catch the move, of course. Um, so good thing we were patient enough, but that was potentially a lose con. Now in this matchup, a bomb is no lead. We're happy to see it in the lead, guys. We're happy to see it in the lead. Because if we see it in the back, this thing is a bloody nightmare for us. Typically, this is just a game loss for me whenever I see a bomb of snow. However, Lantern can tank a lot of um, powder snows and, of course, uh, an energy ball. So this isn't completely horrible if you see it in the lead. <laughs> it's funny how well Lantern does in this matchup, honestly. The opponent's forced to throw two moves. They go for Icy Wind. I come into Vigor Oath here, see what the opponent wants to do. Um, I think I go straight for the Body Slam. I don't necessarily want to shield up. And um, we'll see what the opponent wants to do here. The opponent lets it move through and they come into Lantern. It's Venusaur time. We come straight in here. We're not messing around. The opponent comes into a Steelix behind an energy. Do we have a chance here? I go for an overfarm because I desperately, desperately need to get all the energy I can. Cannot afford to throw an alignment here. The opponent will throw their move to get the debuff, so I just overfarm in that situation. We go for one frenzy plant, we go for one and throw in the next one. Now, can we survive what three dragon tails to get off this bird move? And will this be enough? The opponent does get off a final move. Frenzy plant hits like an absolute truck. We're going to shield up this move. I'm kind of hoping the opponent does not swap out here. I go for one and throw once again for good timing, which again ensures that the opponent does not catch on me. Frenzy Plant doesn't quite kill, but we can't snipe with the Vigoro, and we do get the energy lead on the Lantern. Now, in the zeros, this is a pretty decent matchup for Vigoro. We get off a Body Slam, and as you can see, these counters are ripping through it. The opponent needs to go for two Surfs here. One Thunderbolt is not going to be quite enough. The opponent's actually quite smart here, going for two Surfs. We do get a CMP tie on the second Surf, so extremely close matchup here. Bang, we're going to take out the Lantern. Well, not quite, but they're one foot in the grave already. Um, they do take a snipe with the Surf here. We come back in with the Venu. We farm this down. And can we farm down the Celix in time? We get free two Vine Whips. They get free one. So we do win that match on 1 HP. Super close matchup and good game slot opponent. In most recent seasons, the key to success for me has been finding a team in limited cops that do well. And thankfully, I found this team that is doing quite well. The meta is shifting quite a lot. Um, as I've mentioned, I think twice now. You could potentially start running Venusaur lead. I do think Lantern has become a very, very popular lead. Um, I think the Flyers are starting to move away a little bit, just because Lantern's so popular, and I do also think that Mud Boys are becoming a much more popular lead. Grass-type leads have been extremely uncommon in this cop, almost non-existent. So I do think, actually at this moment in time, um, you can lead Venusaur, and what you can also look to do is if you do get an Abomasnow lead, if it's non-shadow, you can live a Weller Ball. If it's shadow, you just die. It, it's a really rough one. If it is shadow, you just die, and you just lose. So that's, that's the super unfortunate thing about leading Venusaur. So you could even potentially use something like Chestnut. Um, one of the things I do like about Venusaur, of course, is the uh, counter resistance. I do like having Sludge Bomb, which of course can hit things like Dragonite, Altaria. It has a lot more neutral play, I think, than Chestnut. However, Chestnut is probably a little, a little bit better into its counters, right? It does have that super power coverage, which is fantastic. So if you wanted to use a team composition like this with Lantern in the back, I have noticed recently that more of the Flyers are moving to the back. And once again, back in comes Steelix. This is non-shadow, so this is a little bit less scary. However, I still have two shields, so I'm happy to double shield the Venusaur here. I'm going to go for Frenzy Plant number one. I don't think the next Frenzy Plant will qua- Oh, actually, sorry, what am I on about? It will KO, they're on 1 HP. Not too sure what I'm talking about there, to be fair. Um, in comes the Vigoroth, and yeah, that's Curtains once again. Very, very short match there, but Venusaur just cooked. Now, Altaria versus Lantern. This is a pretty much a bait-dependent matchup. Um, if they land a Moonblast, they can farm you down. If they bait or, you know, shield the Thunderbolt, they can win it. However, we just don't have anywhere to go against this thing. We want to stand against the Lantern. I'm going to shield up the potential Moonblast. It's not very often that they do go for the bait here. So I think shielding the Moonblast is pretty fine. The opponent makes a very nice catch on the Chargebug. And Chargebug is kind of an awkward Pokemon for my team. I decided to throw in the Venusaur here because I've already chipped them. And this should basically put them into close to Sludge Bomb range. Once Sludge Bomb is enough to, to uh, KO this thing, I think I'm going to look to go for free and throw for good timing. I definitely was tempted to go for a CMP tie. However, if they go for the extra, it can be a little bit ropey. And right here, this is tricky. I decided to let it go. And I look to get the extra energy, I think, with Vigoroth, potentially. The opponent does have an Altaria. Um, I decide here they must have some sort of an answer to Lantern. And it's actually their own Lantern. So up energy. 
we're actually in a, in a decent position here. The opponent goes straight for the Surf. I'm going to see him pay the Surf with the uh, Body Slam here. Oh, oh, sorry, they don't. I think they got denied. Um, sorry about that. But yeah, they go for a Surf eventually here. They typically don't go for the full send Thunderbolt. Um, from here, with the Spark damage, they can more or less take me out. I'm pretty satisfied. I'm going to come in here to the Lantern, tank this move, and look to see what the opponent wants to do. The opponent does go straight for the Surf, which is quite lucky. The opponent definitely should have committed to the Thunderbolt. I'm going to commit to the Thunderbolt, and we do actually get a CMP tie. The opponent's definitely misplaying this match quite a lot because going for that CMP basically allows my Vigoroth to potentially uh, farm up to two moves. Not only do they CMP, they YOLO the Moonblast, which is completely unnecessary at that point, and we're going to farm up as much energy as we can. Now, right here, I think that was another CMP tie. But we do just about get the knockout, which is perfect. Back in comes Lantern, and we'll take it out with Body Slam. So good games all played there. Um, definitely, that could have been very dicey. I think the opponent helped us out in that match quite a lot. Good games, guys, and for the first time, we've got a Dragonite lead, so let's see how this plays out. We're going to get Spark, Spark, Spark. I always go for the extra. I don't throw immediately on 6, just in case the opponent wants to give me a free Spark, which will basically allow me to uh, I paste the 2 Surfs. The opponent goes straight for a Super Power and comes in to a Chansey. Oh my goodness, dude. <sighs> okay, I've got Vigrove, so we're going to farm up 100 energy on the Lantern. We're just going to make it impossible for them to swap out as well. We're coming into Vigrove. We're going to farm up to 100 energy here, meaning that if the opponent wants to swap back into the Dragonite, they're going to have to eat multiple body slams. Hyper Beam does about 50% of my health. This Pokemon is so dumb. But anyway guys, I hope you did enjoy today's video. Um, if you guys did, please do me a favour. Drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel. It is absolutely free and we're uploading uh, lots of great teams here. And of course, live streaming more or less every day. I would say at least five, six times per week. I'm over farming as much as possible. I decide here, because I'm facing a Chansey, I might as well shield up that move. Commit to the farm down. Back in comes Golbat. I should have went for the Rock Slide here. Um, I decide though that the opponent will most likely shield the next move, so we do go for the uh, the body slam this time. We farmed up to well above, so the opponent should know that it is a rock slide. I didn't want the opponent to take me up with a poison fang, so we go for this. I know the opponent's going to commit to the farm down now. We go for the wombo combo. We've banged 100 energy on lantern, and at this point, guys, we should be able to IPS the uh, the dragonite. Here it comes. We, we do end up going for a surf here, which is a little bit unnecessary. I could just thunderbolt it. Um, I guess we do go for back to back surfs. The opponent still had a shield. And yeah, that's basically curtains. As you can see, if you land the surf, it basically takes them out. And we have a full health Venusaur in the back. Get destroyed, Chansey. Good games well played. And thank you very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe. Thank you very much for all the support. And big thank you to our channel members and supporters who are members on the channel, uh, donate on the streams, and also for the uh, research gifts. Big thank you to all of you. It's super appreciated. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.